G'day guys, Pete here. It's Monday, it's time for another tutorial. Now this one probably won't be as long as the last one, and I kind of, I asked you guys for feedback and what you wanted to see, and I didn't get any other than how to get swag, and <laughs> I don't know how to give you guys swag, I don't even know what swag really is. Uh, I sit in front of my computer and I make videos all day, that's, that's my thing. So, uh, this is my lovely desktop again. Um, again, thanks Inkbyte for the awesome art, like, I can't... <laughs> It just blows my mind. He's amazing. He's gone full time now. I'm gonna put a link to, in the description to his stuff. Check him out. Tell him Pete sent you. He'll love it. Um, so what I thought today is I'll show you how I set up uh, Adobe Premiere Pro um, for my videos. Simply because a lot of people I see try and use it and kind of muck the settings up to the point where they don't like it, and then they go back to Vegas or Movie Maker or whatever they're used to using. Now for me, I've always used Premiere Pro. I've used Premiere Pro as long as I've been doing videos. I tried, excuse me, oh, sorry about that. I've tried Vegas uh, when I first started, like when I first, first started, and I liked it, but it kept doing a lot of funky things to me. Like I had videos that had like a million hours of black at the end of it, or black in the middle of it, or, you know, frame skipping, or jittering, and it, it just never worked the way I wanted it to work, so <coughs> I looked at alternatives, and I was lucky enough to, to score a copy of uh, the Master Collection from Adobe from my job, and I said, hey, Premiere Pro's in there, let's let's give that a go, so since then I've been using Premiere Pro religiously, and I enjoy it, so what we'll do is we'll just blaze it up, it should be nice and quick to load, because I have an SSD and it's amazing, look at that, Whew. now, I've got two projects already here set up as my, like, uh, I suggest you do this as well. I use it as like a, what's the word, template for my videos. That means that I have a sequence set up, I have all my stuff set up exactly how I want it, and all I do is drop my footage in there where I want it and chop it up and all that kind of good stuff. But all the settings and the stuff that doesn't change, like my music at the start of my videos and the end of my videos and all that, it, it stays there. So it saves me about, sometimes an hour worth editing. And the more time you can save yourself, the easier you can make your workflow, the better it's going to be. So with these videos, I kind of want to, in parts, just chop up and show you guys what my workflow entails, like what I do to get my videos out to you guys. And I'm, I've started with, you know, recording and editing your video, uh, your audio, and now I'll move on to setting up Premiere, and then next week I'll probably move on to how I edit my videos. So I'll actually edit one on the camera for you. Probably chop it up a bit, though. <laughs> but uh, I was going to do that today as well, but... The only footage I have left to edit is my UHC, and you guys can't see that yet. You have to wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Um, so yeah, let's start a new project, just so we can get all the settings. Now, I haven't actually done this for a while. I'm just going to move my mic. I hope it's not too loud, just so I can type. We'll call it Toot for tutorial. Clever, huh? Now, as I showed you guys, I have my, um, oh, where is it? My capture hard drive here. Um, it has my, you know, all my good stuff on there, so it, it's it's good, it's handy there. And for some reason, it does that. That's cool. That's because that's where my footage normally is. Now I don't actually change any of these settings here. These are all perfect to me. I don't make a scratch disc or anything like that. It uses my raw capture one when it needs to. <laughs> I've actually used a lot. Excuse me, a lot of my hard drive, my raw capture hard drive, um, doing UHC. It uses up a lot of footage, like a lot of hard drive space. So I just go OK to that. And what I do here is none of these really do what you want them to do. Like, but I pick the 720p ones here. But you see how the frames are kind of, they're not what we want. They're not good. 23.97. What is that? No one, no one wants that. So I click that and I just go settings because it will fill like bits how I want it. So we just go custom up here. We want to change that to our 29.97. That's what we like. Our frame size needs to be 128 by 720. Da da. Now we want to change pixel aspect ratio to square pixels. Bam, look at that, six by nine ratio, that's what we want, perfect. We don't want any fills to change, and we'll leave that as it is. Uh, audio, all this stuff here should be fine how it is, unless you want to change your audio, or you record a certain different type of audio, or you have a better microphone than me, whatever. That's kind of for you to, to chop up and decide yourself. Uh, but for me, this is, is all I do. Uh, tracks, I leave the same. I just have four audio tracks, because that's plenty. What I actually do when I do my videos is I use my first three audio tracks. Uh, the first one is my voice, the second one is normally the game sound, and the third one I use for uh, music and whatnot. And then the fourth one I actually mute, um, because it's, it's quite often that I'll have music in one video, and I know I'll use it again, but I don't want to use it 
in my next video. But I don't want to lose all my, you know, my cuts and my my time bar graph changes and all that kind of stuff. So I just drop it down to you know the fourth one, the fourth uh, audio layer, and it uh, it mutes it. So it, it helps me make it better. <laughs> uh, we call this two. It doesn't matter what you call this. It's just a sequence name, and we go okay. Now I have changed my Adobe Premiere layer a little bit. And actually, it's been a bit cheeky, so we'll just do that so we can see that again. Uh, so all I did there was window, workspace. I made sure it was in editing. And then, it, yeah, it's pretty much how I want it. Actually, yeah, that's that's exactly how I have it. So what this is, this is your uh, your workspace. So this is how it's set up. Now, I might have some raw footage. I'm just going to... You don't need to see that. We'll just go to our capture hard drive, raw. Uh, let's see... Where's my Angry Joe's footage that I had? I need to start naming my footage. What do you guys reckon? Good idea? Good idea. We'll just grab this for now. That, that looks like it's usable. So all I do now is I highlight my three things. My two audio, which I showed you how to do, which I've edited, and then my video. Now, to get it onto my timeline, you can just drag this like that, the video. But you see how it grabs an audio channel? And that'll be whatever your first audio channel is there. Now, I don't like doing that. Uh, simply because it, it'll cause problems. So what I do, I actually drag my video up into the, the source viewer. And what I do, I actually cut it here. So what I do, I like find where I want to start. And then what I do, I put a mark in. And then I find where I want to end. And I mark it out. And what that does, that pretty much straight away cuts, you know, the start and the end way for me. And then I grab this just this one here. That is the video only icon. And I drag it to my timeline. I slam it there. And as you can see, it starts... Where uh, where our end thing is, and it'll end. Uh, oops. Just it'll end where our end thing. See that it just it just works, all right? It just works. So that, that that's brilliant. That's exactly what we want it to do. I'm getting messages and stuff galore. That's all right. Should be on silent. You shouldn't hear it. Now, as for audio, now you need to work out what audio layers are what. So. I can see from this, this is probably going to be the... Trust same. me, I don't either. Yeah. It's, it's because I've set my speakers to be the first channel. So I chuck my, my you know, my sound audio, my game audio or Skype audio. They all kind of merge into one. And I chuck them on my line too. And I grab my audio, which is me talking. And I chuck it down here. Now, the problem with doing that, if you have a look, if we go all the way to the end here, see how we got all this extra audio at the end? That's because we chopped up the first one. What we can do though, if we just cancel, just delete them, and we chuck this one here. See that? We can go a mark here, and we can go. Uh, we'll just skip to the end, and we'll go a mark here. And that should, we'll just drag this out so it's. See, see how it's got the little, you can't really see them that good, but it's got the little um, the marks there. So we just drag this in the middle, just so we have some space. We can just grab our audio now. We can chuck it down here. And. Oh, I've made a boo boo. Alright. Made a boo boo because <laughs> I'm trying to do this on the fly. I normally have this all set up. But what you can do then is you can see the time. See the time there? So if we just copy that. We went, oh, that's right. We need the first one. Alright, so you copy the time of the first one. And then you drag your audio in here, and you paste the time, and you just hit enter, and it's going to drop straight down there. So we can mark that as the in now. And if we drag just the audio, and we put it to the end, then we know we need to drag it straight down here. Bam. See? And you just keep doing that for all your audio. I leave gap either side just to make sure you have room to move stuff around. But that'll line the audio up with the video perfectly because they should be the same length. If they're not the same length, you've done something wrong somewhere and you might need to just re-extract the audio from your video. But that's it, right? Now, I chuck music in and um, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, we'll, we'll just use that for a, for example. Now, you chuck your music in, whatever. Now, I like to start off my videos with a video effect. Nope, not video effect, sorry. Video transition, Iris. And I like to do Iris round. And all you do is drag it to the start and if we go play now, see it does that little bloop. I can't explain it. it just goes bloop into the into the screen. And then how I like to end my videos is um, 
I scroll right to the like near the end when I, when I normally when I'm doing my let's play or anything like that, I start to close you know close the video off you know thanks guys for watching blah 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 blah. Uh, when I start getting to the end of that, I'm just thanking everyone. I drag it to that point there, and you've got to click. See that little arrow there? You click that, and it will extend this, and then you can see the timeline graph. And what I do is I just highlight that clip. And it's not gonna let me put a keyframe in. Why not? Oh, there we go. For some reason, it had both things, both uh, channels selected. Oh, because I dragged them. So I chuck a keyframe in there, and I chuck a keyframe in near the end. That's too close to the end. It doesn't matter if you're not right on there, because what you do... Now, see, this, this is opacity, so this is like how much you can see. So if I drag this all the way down to the end, and then I drag it to the right as far as I can as well, that just makes sure that that keyframe is at the end of that video file. And then, if we watch this... You're going to hear me talking, that's all right. You'll now see... Jeez, how long is this? Where, where are you, Snick? Alright, we'll just... Go. Nope. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Alright, I'll do this. We'll just do Did this. Did it fall off the edge? <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it's, it's slowly getting uh, lower and lower. Now the reason why it's taking forever is because the gap between it doesn't look like it's very big but the gap between those two keyframes is quite a few like quite a long time and it smoothly you know will fade it out um so the closer i made it because th this this view here if you have a look like there's like quite a few minutes in between those little areas there if we were to do this to make it bigger you can see you know there is tons of distance between that but yeah that's what i do i end my videos with a fade out i start with an iris round uh when i do my uh transitions when i do cuts i normally grab uh, is it slide? No, it's dissolve. Dissolve, and I cross dissolve. And all that does, it kind of just fades them into each other and switches them. But that's it, that, that's what I'm gonna show you, like, now, yeah, that's a quick look. Now, I'm gonna, next video, I'll do a proper edit, you know, I'll make sure I have footage ready for you guys. I'll be all set, we'll go from start to finish, and uh, I'll get a video out for you guys. And uh, we'll look at uh, post editing and all that kind of stuff in the video after that, and then uploading after that. All right, guys. I've been Pete, thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial as much as the last one. The last one got so much support, and I hope we keep going that way. Uh, so don't forget to hit that like button, share the video with all your friends, I hope it helps you guys. This has been Pete, you guys have hopefully learned something, see you later.